First Chronicles 24 The divisions of the sons of Aaron were these, the sons of Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father and had no children. So Eleazar and Ithamar became the priests. With the help of Zadok of the sons of Eleazar and Ahimelech of the sons of Ithamar, David organized them according to the appointed duties in their service. Since more chief men were found among the sons of Eleazar than among the sons of Ithamar, they organized them under sixteen heads of fathers' houses of the sons of Eleazar and eight of the sons of Ithamar. They divided them by lot, all alike, for there were sacred officers and officers of God among both the sons of Eleazar and the sons of Ithamar. And the scribe Shimea, the son of Nathanael, a Levite, recorded them in the presence of the king and the princes, and Zadok the priest, and Ahimelech the son of Abiathar, and the heads of the fathers' houses of the priests and of the Levites, one father's house being chosen for Eleazar and one chosen for Ithamar. The first lot fell to Jehoiarib, the second to Judea, the third to Haram, the fourth to Seorim, the fifth to Malchijah, the sixth to Mijamin, the seventh to Hekaz, the eighth to Abijah, the ninth to Jeshua, the tenth to Shechaniah, the eleventh to Eliashib, the twelfth to Jacob, the thirteenth to Huppa, the fourteenth to Jeshebiab, the fifteenth to Bilga, the sixteenth to Immer the seventeenth to Hezer, the eighteenth to Hapazes, the nineteenth to Pethahiah, the twentieth to Jehezkel, the twenty-first to Jachin, the twenty-second to Gamal, the twenty-third to Deleah, the twenty-fourth to Maaziah. These had as their appointed duty in their service to come into the house of the Lord according to the procedure established for them by Aaron their father, as the Lord God of Israel had commanded him. And of the rest of the sons of Levi, of the sons of Amram, Shubael, of the sons of Shubael, Judea, of Rehabiah, of the sons of Rehabiah, Ishiah the chief, of the Isharites, Shalomoth, of the sons of Shalomoth, Jahath, the sons of Hebron, Jeriah the chief, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, Jechameam the fourth, the sons of Uzziel, Micah, of the sons of Micah, Shamer, the brother of Micah, Ishiah, of the sons of Ishiah, Zechariah, the sons of Merari, Malai and Mushai, the sons of Jeaziah, Bino, the sons of Merari, of Jeaziah, Bino, Shoham, Zachar, and Ibri of Malai, Eleazar, who had no sons, of Kish, the sons of Kish, Jeramiel, the sons of Mushai, Malai, Eder, and Jeremoth. These were the sons of the Levites according to their father's houses. These also, the head of each father's house, and his younger brother alike, cast lots, just as their brothers the sons of Aaron, in the presence of King David, Zadok, Ahimelech, and the heads of fathers' houses of the priests and of the Levites. 1 Chronicles 25 David and the chiefs of the service also set apart for the service the sons of Asaph and of Heman and of Juduthan, who prophesied with lyres, with harps, and with cymbals. The list of those who did the work and of their duties was of the sons of Asaph, Zachar, Joseph, Nethaniah, and Asherila, sons of Asaph, under the direction of Asaph, who prophesied under the direction of the king. Of Jeduthun, the sons of Jeduthun, Gedaliah, Zerai, Jesheah, Shimei, Hashabiah, and Mattathiah, six under the direction of their father Jeduthun, who prophesied with the lyre in thanksgiving and praise to the Lord. Of Heman, the sons of Heman, Bacchiah, Mataniah, Uzziel, Shabuel, and Jeremoth, Hananiah, Hanani, Eliatha, Gedaltai, and Romam to Ezer, Joshpacasha, Malathi, Hother, Mahazioth. 
All these were the sons of Heman, the king's seer, according to the promise of God to exalt him, for God had given Heman fourteen sons and three daughters. They were all under the direction of their father in the music in the house of the Lord with cymbals, harps, and lyres for the service of the house of God. Asaph, Jeduthun, and Heman were under the order of the king. The number of them, along with their brothers, who were trained in singing to the Lord, all who were skillful, was 288. And they cast lots for their duties, small and great, teacher and pupil alike. The first lot fell for Asaph to Joseph, the second to Gedaliah, to him and his brothers and his sons, twelve. The third to Zachar, his sons and his brothers, twelve. The fourth to Isri, his sons and his brothers, twelve. The fifth to Nethaniah, his sons and his brothers, twelve. The sixth to Bacchiah, his sons and his brothers, twelve. The seventh to Jeshurela, his sons and his brothers, twelve. The eighth to Jeshea, his sons and his brothers, twelve. The ninth to Mataniah, his sons and his brothers, twelve. The tenth to Shimei, his sons and his brothers, twelve. The eleventh to Azarel, his sons and his brothers, twelve. The twelfth to Hashabiah, his sons and his brothers, twelve. To the thirteenth, Shubael, his sons and his brothers, twelve. To the fourteenth, Mattathiah, his sons and his brothers, twelve. To the fifteenth, to Jeremoth, his sons and his brothers, twelve. To the sixteenth, to Hananiah, his sons and his brothers, twelve. To the seventeenth, to Joshbekesha, his sons and his brothers, twelve. To the eighteenth, to Hanani, his sons and his brothers, twelve. To the nineteenth, to Malathi, his sons and his brothers, twelve. To the twentieth, to Eliatha, his sons and his brothers, twelve. To the twenty-first, to Hother, his sons and his brothers, twelve. To the twenty-second, to Gedaltai, his sons and his brothers, twelve. To the twenty-third, to Mahazioth, his sons and his brothers, twelve. To the twenty-fourth, to Romam to Ezer, his sons and his brothers, twelve. First Chronicles 26 As for the divisions of the gatekeepers, of the Korahites, Meshelamiah the son of Cori, of the sons of Asaph. And Meshelamiah had sons, Zechariah the firstborn, Jediel the second, Zebediah the third, Jathniel the fourth, Elam the fifth, Jehohanan the sixth, Elioenai the seventh. And Obed-Edom had sons, Shemaiah the firstborn, Jehozabad the second, Joah the third, Sachar the fourth, Nathanael the fifth, Amiel the sixth, Issachar the seventh, Peulathai the eighth. For God blessed him. Also to his son Shemaiah were sons born who were rulers in their father's houses, for they were men of great ability. The sons of Shemaiah, Othni, Rephael, Obed, and Elzabad, whose brothers were able men, Elihu and Semachiah. All these were of the sons of Obed-Edom, with their sons and brothers, able men qualified for the service, sixty-two of Obed-Edom. And Meshelamiah had sons and brothers, able men, eighteen. And Hosa of the sons of Merari had sons, Shimri the chief, for though he was not the firstborn, his father made him chief. Hilkiah the second, Tebaliah the third, Zechariah the fourth. All the sons and brothers of Hosa were thirteen. These divisions of the gatekeepers, corresponding to their chief men, had duties just as their brothers did, ministering in the house of the Lord. And they cast lots by fathers' houses, small and great alike, for their gates. The lot for the east fell to Shelemiah. They cast lots also for his son Zechariah, a shrewd counselor, and his lot came out for the north. Obed-Edom's came out for the south, and to his sons was allotted the gatehouse. For Shupim and Hosa it came out for the west, at the gate of Shalakith, on the road that goes up. Watch corresponded to watch. On the east there were six each day, on the north four each day, on the south four each day, as well as two and two at the gatehouse. And for the colonnade on the west, 
There were four at the road and two at the colonnade. These were the divisions of the gatekeepers among the Korahites and the sons of Merari. And of the Levites, Ahijah had charge of the treasuries of the house of God and the treasuries of the dedicated gifts. The sons of Laden, the sons of the Gershonites belonging to Laden, the heads of the father's houses belonging to Laden the Gershonite, Jehiali. The sons of Jehiali, Zetham, and Joel his brother, were in charge of the treasuries of the house of the Lord. Of the Amramites, the Izharites, the Hebronites, and the Uzzielites. And Shebuel, the son of Gershom, son of Moses, was chief officer in charge of the treasuries. His brothers, from Eliezer, were his son Rehabiah, and his son Jesheah, and his son Joram, and his son Zichri, and his son Shelemoth. This Shelemoth and his brothers were in charge of all the treasuries of the dedicated gifts that David the king and the heads of the father's houses and the officers of the thousands and the hundreds and the commanders of the army had dedicated. From spoil won in battles they dedicated gifts for the maintenance of the house of the Lord. Also all that Samuel the seer and Saul the son of Kish and Abner the son of Ner and Joab the son of Zeruiah had dedicated. All dedicated gifts were in the care of Shelemoth and his brothers. Of the Izharites, Kenaniah and his sons were appointed to external duties for Israel as officers and judges. Of the Hebronites, Hashabiah and his brothers, 1,700 men of ability, had the oversight of Israel westward of the Jordan for all the work of the Lord and for the service of the king. Of the Hebronites, Jerijah was chief of the Hebronites of whatever genealogy or father's houses. In the fortieth year of David's reign, Search was made, and men of great ability among them were found at Jazer in Gilead. King David appointed him and his brothers, 2,700 men of ability, heads of fathers' houses, to have the oversight of the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of the Manassites for everything pertaining to God and for the affairs of the king. 1 Chronicles 27 This is the number of the people of Israel, the heads of fathers' houses, the commanders of thousands and hundreds, and their officers who served the king in all matters concerning the divisions that came and went, month after month throughout the year, each division numbering twenty-four thousand. Jeshobiam, the son of Zabdiel, was in charge of the first division in the first month. In his division were twenty-four thousand. He was a descendant of Perez and was chief of all the commanders. He served for the first month. Dodai, the Ahohite, was in charge of the division of the second month. In his division were 24,000. The third commander for the third month was Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the chief priest. In his division were 24,000. This is the Benaiah, who was a mighty man of the thirty and in command of the thirty. Amizabad, his son, was in charge of his division. Asahel, the brother of Joab, was fourth for the fourth month, and his son Zebediah after him. In his division were twenty-four thousand. The fifth commander for the fifth month was Shamhath the Izrahite. In his division were twenty-four thousand. Sixth for the sixth month was Ira the son of Ikish the Tekoite. In his division were twenty-four thousand. Seventh for the seventh month was Helez the Pelonite of the sons of Ephraim. In his division were twenty-four thousand. Eighth, for the eighth month, was Sibachai the Hushathite of the Zerahites. In his division were twenty-four thousand. Ninth, for the ninth month, was Abiezer of Anathoth, a Benjaminite. In his division were twenty-four thousand. Tenth, for the tenth month, was Meharai of Natopha of the Zerahites. In his division were twenty-four thousand. Eleventh for the eleventh month was Benaiah of Pirathon of the sons of Ephraim. In his division were twenty-four thousand. Twelfth for the twelfth month was Heldai the Netophathite of Othniel. In his division were twenty-four thousand. Over the tribes of Israel. For the Reubenites, Eliezer the son of Zichri was chief officer. For the Simeonites, Shephatiah the son of Maacah. For Levi, Hashabiah the son of Kemuel. For Aaron, Zadok. For Judah, Elihu, one of David's brothers. 
for Issachar, Amri the son of Michael, for Zebulun, Ishmael the son of Obadiah, for Naphtali, Jeremoth the son of Azrael, for the Ephraimites, Hoshea the son of Azaziah, for the half tribe of Manasseh, Joel the son of Padaiah, for the half tribe of Manasseh in Gilead, Iddo the son of Zechariah, for Benjamin, Jeaziel the son of Abner, for Dan, Azarel the son of Jeroen. These were the leaders of the tribes of Israel. David did not count those below twenty years of age, for the Lord had promised to make Israel as many as the stars of heaven. Joab the son of Zeruiah began to count, but did not finish. Yet wrath came upon Israel for this, and the number was not entered in the chronicles of King David. Over the king's treasuries was Asmaveth the son of Adiel. And over the treasuries in the country, in the cities, in the villages, and in the towers, was Jonathan the son of Uzziah. And over those who did the work of the field for tilling the soil was Ezri the son of Kelub. And over the vineyards was Shimei the Ramathite. And over the produce of the vineyards for the wine cellars was Zabdi the Shifmite. Over the olive and sycamore trees in the Shephelah was Baal Hanan the Gadirite. And over the stores of oil was Joash. Over the herds that pastured in Sharon was Shitri the Sharonite. Over the herds in the valleys was Shaphat the son of Adlai. Over the camels was Obal the Ishmaelite. And over the donkeys was Jedeah the Moronathite. Over the flocks was Jazes the Hagrite. All these were stewards of King David's property. Jonathan, David's uncle, was a counselor, being a man of understanding and a scribe. He and Jehiel, the son of Hakmoni, attended the king's sons. Ahithophel was the king's counselor, and Hushai the archite was the king's friend. Ahithophel was succeeded by Jehoiada, the son of Benaiah and Abiathar. Joab was commander of the king's army. 1 Chronicles 28 David assembled at Jerusalem all the officials of Israel, the officials of the tribes, the officers of the divisions that served the king, the commanders of thousands, the commanders of hundreds, the stewards of all the property and livestock of the king and his sons, together with the palace officials, the mighty men, and all the seasoned warriors. Then King David rose to his feet and said, Hear me, my brothers and my people. I had it in my heart to build a house of rest for the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God. And I made preparations for building. But God said to me, You may not build a house for my name, for you are a man of war and have shed blood. Yet the Lord God of Israel chose me from all my father's house to be king over Israel forever. For he chose Judah as leader, and in the house of Judah my father's house, and among my father's sons he took pleasure in me to make me king over all Israel. And of all my sons, for the Lord has given me many sons, he has chosen Solomon my son to sit on the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. He said to me, It is Solomon your son who shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son and I will be his father. I will establish his kingdom forever. If he continues strong in keeping my commandments and my rules, as he is today. Now therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the assembly of the Lord, and in the hearing of our God, observe and seek out all the commandments of the Lord your God, that you may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance to your children after you forever. And you, Solomon my son, know the God of your father and serve him with a whole heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands every plan and thought. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Be careful now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. 
Then David gave Solomon his son the plan of the vestibule of the temple, and of its houses, its treasuries, its upper rooms and its inner chambers, and of the room for the mercy seat. And the plan of all that he had in mind for the courts of the house of the Lord, all the surrounding chambers, the treasuries of the house of God, and the treasuries for dedicated gifts, for the divisions of the priests and of the Levites, and all the work of the service in the house of the Lord, for all the vessels for the service in the house of the Lord, the weight of gold for all golden vessels for each service, the weight of silver vessels for each service, the weight of the golden lampstands and their lamps, the weight of gold for each lampstand and its lamps, the weight of silver for a lampstand and its lamps, according to the use of each lampstand in the service, the weight of gold for each table for the showbread, the silver for the silver tables, and pure gold for the forks, the basins, and the cups, for the golden bowls and the weight of each, for the silver bowls and the weight of each, for the altar of incense made of refined gold and its weight, also his plan for the golden chariot of the cherubim that spread their wings and covered the ark of the covenant of the Lord. All this he made clear to me in writing from the hand of the Lord, all the work to be done according to the plan. Then David said to Solomon his son, Be strong and courageous and do it. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed, for the Lord God, even my God, is with you. He will not leave you or forsake you until all the work for the service of the house of the Lord is finished. And behold the divisions of the priests and the Levites for all the service of the house of God. And with you in all the work will be every willing man who has skill for any kind of service. Also the officers and all the people will be wholly at your command. First Chronicles 29 And David the king said to all the assembly, Solomon my son, whom alone God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. And the work is great, for the palace will not be for man, but for the Lord God. So I have provided for the house of my God, so far as I was able, the gold for the things of gold, the silver for the things of silver, and the bronze for the things of bronze, the iron for the things of iron, and wood for the things of wood, besides great quantities of onyx and stones for setting, antimony, colored stones, all sorts of precious stones and marble. Moreover, in addition to all that I have provided for the holy house, I have a treasure of my own of gold and silver, and because of my devotion to the house of my God, I give it to the house of my God. Three thousand talents of gold, of the gold of Ophir, and seven thousand talents of refined silver, for overlaying the walls of the house, and for all the work to be done by craftsmen, gold for the things of gold, and silver for the things of silver, who then will offer willingly, consecrating himself today to the Lord? Then the leaders of fathers' houses made their free will offerings, as did also the leaders of the tribes, the commanders of thousands and of hundreds, and the officers over the king's work. They gave for the service of the house of God five thousand talents and ten thousand derricks of gold, ten thousand talents of silver, eighteen thousand talents of bronze, and one hundred thousand talents of iron. And whoever had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the house of the Lord, in the care of Jehiel the Gershonite. Then the people rejoiced because they had given willingly, for with a whole heart they had offered freely to the Lord. David the king also rejoiced greatly. Therefore David blessed the Lord in the presence of all the assembly, and David said, Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty, for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. 
Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might, and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. But who am I, and what is my people, that we should be able thus to offer willingly? For all things come from you, and of your own have we given you. For we are strangers before you, and sojourners, as all our fathers were. Our days on the earth are like a shadow, and there is no abiding. O Lord our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building you a house, for your holy name comes from your hand and is all your own. I know, my God, that you test the heart and have pleasure in uprightness. In the uprightness of my heart, I have freely offered all these things, and now I have seen your people who are present here, offering freely and joyously to you. O Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, our fathers, keep forever such purposes and thoughts in the hearts of your people, and direct their hearts toward you. Grant to Solomon, my son, a whole heart, that he may keep your commandments, your testimonies, and your statutes, performing all, and that he may build the palace for which I have made provision. Then David said to all the assembly, Bless the Lord your God. And all the assembly blessed the Lord, the God of their fathers, and bowed their heads and paid homage to the Lord and to the king. And they offered sacrifices to the Lord, and on the next day offered burnt offerings to the Lord, one thousand bulls, one thousand rams, and one thousand lambs, with their drink offerings and sacrifices in abundance for all Israel. And they ate and drank before the Lord on that day with great gladness. And they made Solomon the son of David king the second time, and they anointed him as prince for the Lord, and Zadok as priest. Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king in place of David his father. And he prospered, and all Israel obeyed him. All the leaders and the mighty men, and also all the sons of King David, pledged their allegiance to King Solomon. And the Lord made Solomon very great in the sight of all Israel, and bestowed on him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. Thus David the son of Jesse reigned over all Israel. The time that he reigned over Israel was forty years. He reigned seven years in Hebron and thirty-three years in Jerusalem. Then he died at a good age, full of days, riches, and honor. And Solomon his son reigned in his place. Now the acts of King David, from first to last, are written in the chronicles of Samuel the seer, and in the chronicles of Nathan the prophet, and in the chronicles of Gad the seer, with accounts of all his rule and his might, and of the circumstances that came upon him and upon Israel, and upon all the kingdoms of the countries. Second Chronicles Second Chronicles 1 Solomon the son of David established himself in his kingdom, and the Lord his God was with him, and made him exceedingly great. Solomon spoke to all Israel, to the commanders of thousands and of hundreds, to the judges and to all the leaders in all Israel, the heads of fathers' houses. And Solomon and all the assembly with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon, for the tent of meeting of God, which Moses the servant of the Lord had made in the wilderness, was there. But David had brought up the ark of God from Kiriath-Jearim to the place that David had prepared for it, for he had pitched a tent for it in Jerusalem. Moreover, the bronze altar that Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made, was there before the tabernacle of the Lord. And Solomon and the assembly sought it out. And Solomon went up there to the bronze altar before the Lord, which was at the tent of meeting, and offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. In that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said to God, You have shown great and steadfast love to David my father, and have made me king in his place. 
O Lord God, let your word to David my father be now fulfilled, for you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me now wisdom and knowledge to go out and come in before this people. For who can govern this people of yours, which is so great? God answered Solomon, Because this was in your heart, and you have not asked possessions, wealth, honor, or the life of those who hate you, and have not even asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may govern my people over whom I have made you king, wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. I will also give you riches, possessions, and honor, such as none of the kings had who were before you, and none after you shall have the like. So Solomon came from the high place at Gibeon, from before the tent of meeting, to Jerusalem. And he reigned over Israel. Solomon gathered together chariots and horsemen. He had one thousand four hundred chariots and twelve thousand horsemen, whom he stationed in the chariot cities and with the king in Jerusalem. And the king made silver and gold as common in Jerusalem as stone, and he made cedar as plentiful as the sycamore of the Shephelah. And Solomon's import of horses was from Egypt and Kiwi, and the king's traders would buy them from Kiwi for a price. They imported a chariot from Egypt for six hundred shekels of silver, and a horse for one hundred fifty. Likewise through them these were exported to all the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Syria. Second Chronicles 2 Now Solomon purposed to build a temple for the name of the Lord and a royal palace for himself. And Solomon assigned seventy thousand men to bear burdens, and eighty thousand to quarry in the hill country, and three thousand six hundred to oversee them. And Solomon sent word to Hiram the king of Tyre, As you dealt with David my father, and sent him cedar to build himself a house to dwell in, so deal with me. Behold, I am about to build a house for the name of the Lord my God, and dedicate it to him for the burning of incense of sweet spices before him, and for the regular arrangement of the showbread, and for burnt offerings morning and evening, on the Sabbaths, and the new moons, and the appointed feasts of the Lord our God, as ordained forever for Israel. The house that I am to build will be great, for our God is greater than all gods. But who is able to build him a house, since heaven, even highest heaven, cannot contain him? Who am I to build a house for him, except as a place to make offerings before him? So now send me a man skilled to work in gold, silver, bronze, and iron, and in purple, crimson, and blue fabrics, trained also in engraving, to be with the skilled workers who are with me in Judah and Jerusalem, whom David my father provided. Send me also cedar, cypress, and algum timber from Lebanon, for I know that your servants know how to cut timber in Lebanon, and my servants will be with your servants, to prepare timber for me in abundance, for the house I am to build will be great and wonderful. I will give for your servants, the woodsmen who cut timber, twenty thousand cores of crushed wheat, twenty thousand cores of barley, twenty thousand baths of wine, and twenty thousand baths of oil. Then Hiram, the king of Tyre, answered in a letter that he sent to Solomon, Because the Lord loves his people, he has made you king over them. Hiram also said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who made heaven and earth, who has given King David a wise son, who has discretion and understanding, who will build a temple for the Lord and a royal palace for himself. Now I have sent a skilled man who has understanding, Hiram Abai, the son of a woman of the daughters of Dan, and his father was a man of Tyre. He is trained to work in gold, silver, bronze, iron, stone, and wood, and in purple, blue, and crimson fabrics, and fine linen, and to do all sorts of engraving and execute any design that may be assigned him with your craftsmen, the craftsmen of my lord, David your father. Now therefore the wheat and barley, oil and wine, of which my lord has spoken, let him send to his servants, and we will cut whatever timber you need from Lebanon, and bring it to you in rafts by sea to Joppa, so that you may take it up to Jerusalem. Then Solomon counted all the resident aliens who were in the land of Israel, after the census of them that David his father had taken, and there were found one hundred fifty-three thousand six hundred. 
70,000 of them he assigned to bear burdens, 80,000 to quarry in the hill country, and 3,600 as overseers to make the people work. 2 Chronicles 3 Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to David his father at the place that David had appointed, on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. He began to build in the second month of the fourth year of his reign. These are Solomon's measurements for building the house of God. The length, in cubits of the old standard, was sixty cubits, and the breadth, twenty cubits. The vestibule in front of the nave of the house was twenty cubits long, equal to the width of the house, and its height was one hundred twenty cubits. He overlaid it on the inside with pure gold. The nave he lined with cypress and covered it with fine gold and made palms and chains on it. He adorned the house with settings of precious stones. The gold was gold of Parvaim. So he lined the house with gold, its beams, its thresholds, its walls and its doors, and he carved cherubim on the walls. And he made the most holy place. Its length corresponding to the breadth of the house was twenty cubits, and its breadth was twenty cubits. He overlaid it with six hundred talents of fine gold. The weight of gold for the nails was fifty shekels, and he overlaid the upper chambers with gold. In the most holy place he made two cherubim of wood and overlaid them with gold. The wings of the cherubim together extended twenty cubits. One wing of the one of five cubits touched the wall of the house, and its other wing of five cubits touched the wing of the other cherub. And of this cherub, one wing of five cubits touched the wall of the house, and the other wing, also of five cubits, was joined to the wing of the first cherub. The wings of these cherubim extended twenty cubits. The cherubim stood on their feet facing the nave, and he made the veil of blue and purple and crimson fabrics and fine linen, and he worked cherubim on it. In front of the house he made two pillars thirty-five cubits high, with a capital of five cubits on the top of each. He made chains like a necklace and put them on the tops of the pillars, and he made a hundred pomegranates and put them on the chains. He set up the pillars in front of the temple, one on the south, the other on the north, that on the south he called Jachin, and that on the north, Boaz. Second Chronicles 4 He made an altar of bronze, twenty cubits long and twenty cubits wide and ten cubits high. Then he made the sea of cast metal. It was round, ten cubits from brim to brim, and five cubits high, and a line of thirty cubits measured its circumference. Under it were figures of gourds for ten cubits, compassing the sea all around. The gourds were in two rows, cast with it when it was cast. It stood on twelve oxen, three facing north, three facing west, three facing south, and three facing east. The sea was set on them, and all their rear parts were inward. Its thickness was a handbreadth, and its brim was made like the brim of a cup, like the flower of a lily. It held three thousand baths. He also made ten basins in which to wash, and set five on the south side and five on the north side. In these they were to rinse off what was used for the burnt offering, and the sea was for the priests to wash in. And he made ten golden lampstands as prescribed, and set them in the temple, five on the south side and five on the north. He also made ten tables and placed them in the temple, five on the south side and five on the north. And he made a hundred basins of gold. He made the court of the priests and the great court and doors for the court and overlaid their doors with bronze. And he set the sea at the southeast corner of the house. Hiram also made the pots, the shovels, and the basins. So Hiram finished the work that he did for King Solomon on the house of God. The two pillars, the bowls, and the two capitals on the top of the pillars, and the two lattice works to cover the two bowls of the capitals that were on the top of the pillars, and the four hundred pomegranates for the two lattice works, two rows of pomegranates for each lattice work to cover the two bowls of the capitals that were on the pillars. He made the stands also, and the basins on the stands, and the one sea, and the twelve oxen underneath it. The pots, the shovels, the forks, and all the equipment for these, Hiram Abai made of burnished bronze for King Solomon, for the house of the Lord. In the plain of the Jordan the king cast them, in the clay ground between Succoth and Zerida. Solomon made all these things in great quantities, for the weight of the bronze was not sought. 
So Solomon made all the vessels that were in the house of God, the golden altar, the tables for the bread of the presence, the lampstands and their lamps of pure gold to burn before the inner sanctuary, as prescribed, the flowers, the lamps, and the tongs of purest gold, the snuffers, basins, dishes for incense, and firepans of pure gold, and the sockets of the temple for the inner doors to the most holy place, and for the doors of the nave of the temple were of gold. Second Chronicles 5 Thus all the work that Solomon did for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in the things that David his father had dedicated, and stored the silver, the gold, and all the vessels in the treasuries of the house of God. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel, and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the fathers' houses of the people of Israel, in Jerusalem, to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. And all the men of Israel assembled before the king at the feast that is in the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites took up the ark. And they brought up the ark, the tent of meeting, and all the holy vessels that were in the tent. The Levitical priests brought them up. And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who had assembled before him were before the ark, sacrificing so many sheep and oxen that they could not be counted or numbered. Then the priests brought the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to its place, in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place, underneath the wings of the cherubim. The cherubim spread out their wings over the place of the Ark, so that the cherubim made a covering above the Ark and its poles. And the poles were so long that the ends of the poles were seen from the holy place before the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen from outside. And they are there to this day, there was nothing in the ark except the two tablets that Moses put there at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the people of Israel when they came out of Egypt. And when the priests came out of the holy place, for all the priests who were present had consecrated themselves without regard to their divisions, and all the Levitical singers, Asaph, Heman, and Jeduthun, their sons and kinsmen, arrayed in fine linen with cymbals, harps, and lyres, stood east of the altar with 120 priests who were trumpeters. And it was the duty of the trumpeters and singers to make themselves heard in unison in praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. And when the song was raised with trumpets and cymbals and other musical instruments in praise to the Lord, For he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The house, the house of the Lord, was filled with a cloud, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Second Chronicles 6 Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he would dwell in thick darkness, but I have built you an exalted house, a place for you to dwell in forever. Then the king turned around and blessed all the assembly of Israel, while all the assembly of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel who with his hand has fulfilled what he promised with his mouth to David my father, saying, Since the day that I brought my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel in which to build a house, that my name might be there. And I chose no man as prince over my people Israel. But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name may be there, and I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord said to David, my father, Whereas it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Nevertheless, it is not you who shall build the house, but your son who shall be born to you shall build a house for my name. Now the Lord has fulfilled his promise that he made. For I have risen in the place of David my father, and sit on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised. And I have built the house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. And there I have set the ark, in which is the covenant of the Lord that he made with the people of Israel. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands. Solomon had made a bronze platform, five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high, and had set it in the court, and he stood on it. 
Then he knelt on his knees in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands toward heaven and said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven or on earth, keeping covenant and showing steadfast love to your servants who walk before you with all their heart, who have kept with your servant David, my father, what you declared to him. You spoke with your mouth and with your hand have fulfilled it this day. Now therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, keep for your servant David, my father, what you have promised him, saying, You shall not lack a man to sit before me on the throne of Israel. If only your sons pay close attention to their way, to walk in my law as you have walked before me. Now therefore, O Lord God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, which you have spoken to your servant David. But will God indeed dwell with man on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, how much less this house that I have built. Yet have regard to the prayer of your servant, and to his plea, O Lord my God, listening to the cry and to the prayer that your servant prays before you, that your eyes may be open day and night toward this house, the place where you have promised to set your name, that you may listen to the prayer that your servant offers toward this place, and listen to the pleas of your servant and of your people Israel, when they pray toward this place, and listen from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. If a man sins against his neighbor and is made to take an oath, and comes and swears his oath before your altar in this house, then hear from heaven and act and judge your servants, repaying the guilty by bringing his conduct on his own head, and vindicating the righteous by rewarding him according to his righteousness. If your people Israel are defeated before the enemy because they have sinned against you, and they turn again and acknowledge your name and pray and plead with you in this house, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them again to the land that you gave to them and to their fathers. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain, because they have sinned against you, if they pray toward this place and acknowledge your name and turn from their sin when you afflict them, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel, when you teach them the good way in which they should walk and grant rain upon your land, which you have given to your people as an inheritance. If there is famine in the land, if there is pestilence or blight or mildew or locust or caterpillar, if their enemies besiege them in the land at their gates, whatever plague, whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer, whatever plea is made by any man or by all your people Israel, each knowing his own affliction and his own sorrow and stretching out his hands toward this house, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, and forgive and render to each whose heart you know, according to all his ways. For you, you only know the hearts of the children of mankind, that they may fear you and walk in your ways all the days that they live in the land that you gave to our fathers. Likewise, when a foreigner who is not of your people Israel comes from a far country for the sake of your great name and your mighty hand and your outstretched arm. When he comes and prays toward this house, hear from heaven your dwelling place, and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you, in order that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people Israel, and that they may know that this house that I have built is called by your name. If your people go out to battle against their enemies, by whatever way you shall send them, and they pray to you toward this city that you have chosen, and the house that I have built for your name, then hear from heaven their prayer and their plea, and maintain their cause. If they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you are angry with them, and give them to an enemy, so that they are carried away captive to a land far or near, Yet if they turn their heart in the land to which they have been carried captive, and repent and plead with you in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned 
and have acted perversely and wickedly. If they repent with all their mind and with all their heart in the land of their captivity, to which they were carried captive, and pray toward their land, which you gave to their fathers, the city that you have chosen, and the house that I have built for your name, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, their prayer and their pleas, and maintain their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Now, O oh my God, let your eyes be open, and your ears attentive to the prayer of this place. And now arise, O oh Lord God, and go to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. Let your priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let your saints rejoice in your goodness. O Lord God, do not turn away the face of your anointed one. Remember your steadfast love for David, your servant. 2 Chronicles 7 As soon as Solomon finished his prayer, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priests could not enter the house of the Lord, because the glory of the Lord filled the Lord's house. When all the people of Israel saw the fire come down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed down with their faces to the ground on the pavement, and worshipped and gave thanks to the Lord, saying, For he is good! For his steadfast love endures forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifice before the Lord. King Solomon offered as a sacrifice 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. The priests stood at their posts, the Levites also, with the instruments for music to the Lord that King David had made for giving thanks to the Lord. For his steadfast love endures forever whenever David offered praises by their ministry. Opposite them the priests sounded trumpets, and all Israel stood. And Solomon consecrated the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord. For there he offered the burnt offering and the fat of the peace offerings, because the bronze altar Solomon had made could not hold the burnt offering and the grain offering and the fat. At that time Solomon held the feast for seven days, and all Israel with him, a very great assembly, from Lebo Hamath to the brook of Egypt. And on the eighth day they held a solemn assembly, for they had kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. On the twenty-third day of the seventh month he sent the people away to their homes, joyful and glad of heart for the prosperity that the Lord had granted to David and to Solomon and to Israel his people. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house. All that Solomon had planned to do in the house of the Lord and in his own house he successfully accomplished. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open, and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and consecrated this house, that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. And as for you, if you will walk before me as David your father walked, doing according to all that I have commanded you, and keeping my statutes and my rules, then I will establish your royal throne, as I covenanted with David your father, saying, You shall not lack a man to rule Israel. But if you turn aside and forsake my statutes and my commandments that I have set before you, and go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will pluck you up from my land that I have given you, and this house that I have consecrated for my name, I will cast out of my sight, and I will make it a proverb and a byword among all peoples. And at this house which was exalted, everyone passing by will be astonished and say, Why has the Lord done thus to this land and to this house? Then they will say, Because they abandoned the Lord, 
the God of their fathers who brought them out of the land of Egypt and laid hold on other gods and worshipped them and served them. Therefore he has brought all this disaster on them.